Okay, so today we will do some examples and exercises on heuristic evaluation. So I need your help. It will be mainly an interactive lesson, okay? Um, just to recap the phases of an heuristic evaluation, uh, we introduced it yesterday. Um, and it will be the focus of the assignment number three. Um, we can have an initial pre-evaluation training uh, during which the design team uh, introduces to the experts the particular domain of, of the interactive system because just remember that an expert in AXI is not necessarily an expert of a of the medical domain, for example. So if, you, if your system is in the medical domain, it can be important to have this pre-evaluation training. In the assignment three, you will probably need to introduce a little bit uh, the evaluators with your system, your solution, just to explain uh, which is the main purpose of your idea, of your prototype. Then we have the individual evaluation. So each expert, uh, evaluates the system trying to apply the heuristics that we have seen yesterday individually uh, and the expert should give a severity rating to each violation that uh, is found on the prototype on the interface on the system then there is a consensus phase so the group of experts meet together and try to reach an agreement and produce uh, a unique report with all the violations uh, with a given severity rate for each violation that have been found okay um, again we can define a set of tasks uh, that are the task that the expert will use to evaluate your system you already defined them in the assignment too and for each task the evaluator try your system uh, with typically a multi-step process so uh, the expert can try to perform the task uh, to give an initial uh, feeling of the interaction with your system and then the expert can re-perform the task focusing on specific elements on the interface where we can find problems in this kind of evaluation in different parts of an interface we can focus on single elements like buttons images labels we can focus on uh, uh, similar elements that can be compared. So we can check how the buttons of your interface are displayed and if there are inconsistencies between these, these buttons, for example. We can have problems with the layout of the interface in general. And we can also highlight something that is missing, like, for example, a missing feedback for an important action. OK? So this is what this was just a brief recap of what we have seen yesterday today again we will perform some exercises some examples uh, before this um, we are in the process of finalizing the text for the assignment tree uh, it will be out I think by the end of uh, this week um, basically um, we will create pairs of groups so each group in this course will be assigned to another group and vice versa um, and uh, each group will receive um, at least two um, heuristic evaluations for each prototype okay so this clearly works well with groups of four people uh, I've tried to uh, summarize how you can uh, conduct the assignment in this wonderful chart for example uh, here we have two groups and for example two people can focus on um, one prototype and the other two components can focus on the prototype number two so for example here uh, a1 can do the evaluation for the prototype one of the group b and b can take the role of the computer and then they can swap the roles and then uh, the B1 can do the evaluation for prototype one of A1 okay the same for A2 and B2 
and then B1 and B2 can meet together uh, to conduct this agreement phase and uh, reach an agreement and create this shared report to be given to the group A, okay? And the same happens for prototype two, okay? So um, you will have to evaluate one prototype of the other group and at the same time, you will have to simulate the computer for your prototype for, uh, for helping the other, the other group, okay? Of course, this doesn't work really well when we have groups of three people. Uh, in this case, unfortunately, one of the three components will have to, uh, to do two different evaluations, uh, as I summarized here in the chart, okay? We will take this into account when evaluating your, your assignments and your report, of course. Um, there are, I think, three or four groups with three people, and so you will decide who of you will uh, perform uh, two evaluations instead of one, okay? Of course, you will be asked to uh, upload for the exam your individual report, uh, so, for example, B1 will upload for the exam his or her individual report for the prototype one of group A. This poor guy here will decide which report to be uploaded for the exam, um, because uh, just one, one report is, is needed. Then the shared report, the report that is produced by B1 and B2 by discussing their, their own evaluations, is just given to the other group, just to help the other group to decide, for example, which prototype is better and how to improve the design of their prototypes, okay? But we will not uh, check this shared report, we will only check uh, your individual report. So in a way, we are not evaluating uh, your prototypes, but we are evaluating how you will conduct the evaluation, okay? So how you, you will apply the heuristics and how you will conduct the, the evaluation on another prototype, okay? Any questions? Of course, we will uh, explain this in detail in the text of the assignment uh, three. Okay. So, let's start with the example then. Um, We'll see first an example of an heuristic evaluation on a real website. I would say on a real terrible website. Uh, and then we will do an exercise um, on a low fidelity prototype taken from the last year edition of the course, just to show you maybe the differences that we have in conducting an heuristic evaluation on a real system versus uh, a paper-based prototype. But let's start with the example. Uh, again, the target website is trainitalia.com. Um, for those of you who don't know what is Trainitalia, it's the primary train operator in Italy, um, and it offers both uh, uh, regional and national transports with regional and national high-speed trains. High-speed trains are called uh, Freccia Rossa. Um, I've listed here some tasks that can be useful for you now to spot, I think, several problems. Um, so you can open the website on your uh, laptop and, and try this, these three tasks. The first one is explore the offers proposed by the website and buy a discounted ticket. The second task is buy a Freccia Rossa round trip from Turin to Rome for the winter holidays. And the third task is chat with an operator for receiving support, okay? So you can freely explore these tasks in, in the website, uh, trying to uh, find uh, violations of the 10 heuristics that we have seen yesterday. And in performing these tasks, this is a suggestion to find uh, even more problems. I suggest you, if you have an account, try to log in in the system and maybe also try to change the language of, of, of the website, okay? Um, so again, this is the website, 
and you can try to perform these tasks looking at the heuristics that we have seen yesterday. And I've also reported a possible template for reporting each violation, which is actually similar to the template that you will use in assignment three. So as we have seen yesterday, each violation should be reported in detail um, following this template. So there is a number of the violations. Um, then there is the link to the heuristics, uh, the heuristic that is violated by, by the error that, that you find in the interface. So you can report the heuristic number and the heuristic title. And then you have four different fields. So where, so where the issue occurred, uh, so in which part of the interface you, you found this violation, uh, what, so a description of the problem, the why, so why you think that, the, that this is uh, problematic for the user, and also the severity according to the scale that we have seen yesterday, from, I would say, one to four, because, because zero, uh, if you remember, is used just in the uh, consensus phase. Mm? And there is also an example. So this is a violation, number one, related to the heuristic number four, consistency standards for a given website, I don't know, where specify your language, so in the part of the interface that allow you to specify the language, the what, the app uses save for saving information, except here where it uses store. And why this is a problem? Because it is an inconsistent terminology for the same function in the application, which can create confusion. Severity, three. Okay, according to uh, this evaluator. Mm? It's just an example, of course. So, um, you have 20 minutes to explore this website, and then we can discuss together and try to reach an agreement of, on the violations that you, you will find, okay? Um, try to work individually if you can, of course, today you can also discuss, if you want, with, with your colleagues. Mm? So 20 minutes from now, and then we will uh, discuss together. OK, let's try to uh, recap a little bit and try to to see uh, how many violations you, you found. Uh, but before this, just to add something for the assignment tree that I forgot to mention before, um, we will create these pairs of groups. So uh, you will be assigned to another group by us. So basically to conduct the assignment, you will need to meet with the other group uh, and do the assignment. Um, of course, you can use uh, the, your lab slot to do this. So the pairs of groups will be within the same theme, of course. Uh, but you will be free to conduct the assignment uh, whenever and wherever you want. So you can also conduct it uh, outside the hours of this course, at home, for example, or in another place without our supervision. Um, or, for example, on Monday, we will have uh, one, hour, one hour and a half of supervised work group. I will be in class to answer to your questions and supporting you to set up uh, your prototypes for the assignment tree. But if you are ready, uh, you can already start with the assignment tree and conduct your evaluation also on Monday. Okay? We will try to publish the text of the assignment uh, by the end of, of this week. Okay? So, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, pairs of groups will be within the same slot, okay? So you will be assigned to another group of, your, of, the, same, uh, of the same slot. Um, but again, you can also maybe uh, divide your evaluation, your assignment tree in multiple sessions with the other group because maybe you have uh, half an hour free today and one hour tomorrow, you can also uh, split your assignments in, in multiple moments. Um, okay? 
and again I will we will stress this multiple times I know but it's really important to conduct the evaluation first individually okay because the problem is that for example last year we received I would say several individual reports that were actually the same within the group okay and this will be a problem for you because uh, as you may um, understand you will receive a, a bad evaluation from, from us if we find individual reports that are actually the same hmm? any questions okay let's focus on the train italia website did you find some violations yes no yeah at least some so let's start with the first heuristic uh, which is if i remember correctly uh, visibility of system status did you find some violations related to this heuristic i have some examples so but i'm curious about your your findings Do you have some examples of violations of the first heuristic? No? This could be a problem because there are a lot of violations of this heuristic, but it's the first exercise, so it's probably normal. Um, I've found this one. Um, So, of course, this heuristic is related uh, to uh, the visibility of system status. So, I'm reading the description. The, t the system should always keep users informed about what's going on through appropriate feedback within reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. And here, for example, um, I've tried to... Um, no. That's, that, that's another problem. Okay, let's try to recreate the problem. I'm here, I am on the website. Um, I can look for some train tickets, but now I want to log in, okay? So let's put it in English. So I click on customer area, maybe, yes and I can insert my username and password so my username is, is this one this is a little bit strange but anyway let's focus on the problem of an, uh, on another problem uh, I have the username the password login and that's fine I'm, I'm authenticated on the website um, here I've noticed uh, something really strange I don't know if you noticed this but what what's the problem here it, it's not the problem that I'm trying to highlight but it's another big problem of, of the website yeah this is a yet another problem uh, what happened here yes but basically the main problem here is that the website is is changed right so let's go back i'm on trainitalia.com with a given layout i log in into the system and for some strange reasons now i am on the lefrecce.it website with a with, with uh, i would say a different layout okay so apparently the login uh, has changed the website through which i can interact and this is a, a very strange uh, decision design decision but anyway the problem that i was trying to highlight here related to the heuristic number one is that uh, if i now click on the logo on the navbar logo um, so in theory 
clicking on this means going back to the home page, right? If I click here, I go back to the previous website, which is different, and also I'm completely logged out from the system without any feedback, okay? So now I'm no longer logged in into the system without receiving any feedback, okay? And this is clearly a problem, okay? Do you agree with me? Yes, good, <laughs> okay. And here I think that the main problem is this change in the website, right? So for some, for some very strange reasons, they decided to redirect you to another website when you log in into the system. Any example of violations of heuristic number two? Match between system and the real world. So maybe it's better if you maybe freely tell me which violations you, you found. Yes? Yeah, this is uh, exactly a violation of uh, heuristic number two, the fact that your username is actually a number, which is difficult to remember, and it, uh, it doesn't follow any conventions about uh, username in general, okay? So that's for sure uh, a violation of heuristic number two. Any other examples? So please tell me the violations that you found, even related to other other heuristics. Yes. Maybe on uh, uh, the website uh, in uh, Chinese search, mm -hmm. it doesn't show any hooking at all. No okay. Um, yes. So if I try to change the language and I try to set up the website in Chinese. I have this very, very strange, and I would say terrible layout. Um, and also there is no, no way to look for uh, a train ticket. There is no form to, to search for, for a train ticket. And this is really strange. So the fact that the website is adapting uh, to a given language or a given culture, I would say, is not necessarily a bad thing. But honestly, this is, a, this is a very terrible layout, I think, also for Chinese people. Um, so, yes. And this is related, in your opinion, to which heuristic? I'm trying to understand. Maybe um, it's about the system's conduct, but not the system's Yeah, probably, probably it's about consistency and, and, and standards. Yeah, I agree with you. Of course, sometimes there can be uh, uh, some overlaps, so some problems could be potentially classified under multiple heuristics. It's de it depends from the point of view, and uh, but yeah, this can be, I think, classified in this way. Is it a level four or Sorry? What level is it? Uh, it's your cho choice. I mean, in my opinion, this is a severe problem, so. I would say that for Chinese people, this could be classified as three to four, because probably uh, the website it is not usable at all because there is no form. You cannot search for, for train tickets. Any other violations? Your colleague uh, mentioned the fact that uh, and I've listed this here in the slides. I will upload uh, the new version of the slides with my examples. Um, when we set up the, the English language, there are still some labels that are in Italian. Okay, so for example here, let's go back to, to English if we can. Yeah. So the language is English, 
but here, for example, in the offers menu, there are some words that are still uh, in Italian, and this may create confusion, uh, probably, to English people. Um, and this can be classified as a violation of heuristic number two, right? Match between system and uh, real world, so follow conventions uh, and familiar language for, for the user. Mm? And the other very strange thing is that, look at this, if I uh, select Italian for the language, I have a lot of offers, right? If I select English, again, I don't know why, I have a limited set of offers, right? Why? I don't know. Mm? But this is clearly a violation. Mm? I've also listed it here. I don't remember where. It's probably related to I don't know if it's listed here. No, probably no. But it's clearly a violation, in your opinion, which heuristics is violated here? Probably consistency standards, right? So there is no consistency among different languages here, because we are providing users with different options depending on the language that is selected, okay? Any other violations, any other examples? About the heuristic 10. Yeah, heuristic 10, that is about documentation, right? Yes? In Italian there is a section in assistance and you can find the guidance. Yeah. Something, but with the other languages there is no... Uh, okay. Okay, this is similar to uh, the example that I've mentioned now related to the offers, but it's related to documentation. Th this is the reason why, for, for example, this problem could be classified both uh, under heuristic number four and heuristic number 10. Um, we have a section related to support in Italian, and if we change the language, uh, there is no section about uh, support in English, for example. So there is no consistency, and in English, of course, it's difficult to, to have some support because you cannot find the appropriate section. Yeah? Other examples? Yes? When the page is uh, smaller, mm -hmm. uh, the to the Okay. Okay, yeah, so there can be a problem with the responsiveness of this layout. Um, so, of course, uh, this is the main task, right, searching for uh, train tickets. So, in theory, this search form should be displayed on top of the page when I recite the, the, the layout. Uh, and so this is probably a possible violation of heuristic number. It's probably about minimalistic design. I, I was, I actually put the seven but Yeah, seven is, seven is flexibility. flexibility and the, f yeah. I think it's up to you. You can decide if you, you can classify it under seven or under eight, um, but yeah. That's for sure a possible violation, I would say, with a, a low priority rating, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes? And in your case, if I write the session with all letters from the uppercase or lowercase, it will be wrong? Really? Yes, uh, I don't know, Torino. Okay, so there is this problem. Uh, if I type in 
capital letters, even if the name is, is correct, the platform is saying me that there is an error. Mm? Yeah, this can be a possible violation. So, just to uh, recap, let's see if there are other interesting examples from my side. I already mentioned this. Um, yes. For example, in the search procedure, if the user selects by mistake a train, then there is no easy way to modify the trip. You can, you can try. Um, you basically have to restart the search procedure um, from scratch. Um, uh, also, if, if I start the search procedure uh, in a guest mode without being logged in into the system and then I try to log in in the system, I'm redirected to another page. And this is clearly a problem. We are not offering a minimalistic logging experience because I have to restart my, my task from, from scratch because I'm redirected to, to another page. Uh, I would expect that if I log in, I can continue uh, from the point uh, that, that I left in the system. So I classified this under heuristic number three, user control and freedom. I'm not in control. I would like to continue the search and eventually buy the ticket, but I'm redirected to, to another page. Mm, okay, we can skip this. Ah, th this is also interesting. We have seen before that there are these two websites, and this is, I think, the main problem behind this platform. Um, and also, the search form in a website is different from the search form in the other website. So, if I use the search form as a non-authenticated user, this is the form, right? If I log in, and I try to purchase a ticket, there is another search form that is slightly different than the previous one, okay? So there is no consistency. Hmm? Do you agree with me? So this is probably a violation of heuristic number four, heuristic about consistency. And then you can look at, at these slides when I will upload them to, to see the other possible violations. Um, another, the last one is, is this. Um, let's say I, I, I want to buy a discounted ticket, some ticket related to an offer. I go, let's put it in Italian because I have more offers. Um, I go in, a, in, a, in an offer, for example, uh, let's see if I can. This one, Italian tour, okay. I have the description of the offer. I have a dedicated button for probably, at least in my opinion, buying some tickets related to this offer. I click here and I'm, no, in this case it's, it's working because I have this still different search form. This is a problem, uh, but it's in some ways related to, to the offer that I selected. But there are other offers that redirects you to the traditional form in the home page. And this is clearly a problem because I'm trying to purchase a ticket for a given offer. So I would expect to have some uh, personalized uh, interaction with the system to buy a ticket related to that offer. So uh, let me check if I can. Yeah, for example, this one, some offers related to specific locations. For example, uh, this one, it's about an event in Milan. I click here. I want to buy my ticket. 
and I'm redirect to the traditional form. Okay, so I'm lost here because I wanted to buy a ticket for Milan for a given event, and now I have this search form that is completely empty. Mm? And this is for sure a violation uh, of, of an heuristic. Mm? Okay. This was an heuristic evaluation conducted, of course, in 20 minutes on a real system. Let's try to uh, do the same exercise on a low fidelity prototype, okay? You can find online the, the slides about this exercise. It's just to see the differences uh, between a real system and a paper-based prototype. You will probably uh, see that it will be more difficult to find violations here, mainly because you don't have colors, you don't have too many screens, and so it's probably more difficult to find um, violations. And also you will probably discover that uh, some heuristics uh, only apply minimally to a prototype uh, on a paper, hmm? on a sheet of paper. So I selected this, uh, this target prototype, a real deal. Uh, it's taken from the last year edition of this course. Uh, it was the pre-feedback version, so again, don't use it as an example of a good prototype. Um, actually, I've included the uh, high-level diagram of the screens to show you how the prototype uh, works. Let me see if I can show you the prototype. It's this one. Um, the app was called uh, Real Deal. Um, it was related to a given topic of the last year edition that was digital well-being. Um, basically, this application uh, um, was intended to support users to meet in person to avoid problems like overusing technology um, alone and so on. So this application supported users to meet in person basically by giving you rewards and um, tickets for in-person events that you can share with other people to meet in person, okay? Um, and these were the three tasks defined by this group. So finding someone with common interests, getting a discount for a given place to meet someone in person, and adding a discount for, for the business. So basically the first two tasks were about the target population. The complex task uh, was related to the other side so the, the, the company, the business. Mm? So I think you can select uh, one of these tasks and you can try to perform one of these tasks on the prototype, trying to see if you can find some, some violations in the prototype, okay? So I think you can do this in 15 minutes and then we can conclude the lesson discussing some, some violations. So let's try to wrap up the lesson. Um, I've uploaded the updated versions of the slides with my examples of violations that I found on the Trenitalia website. So if you want, you can also check my examples uh, and try to get some inspiration. Um, but let's focus on the low fidelity prototype. Were you able to perform the tasks on this prototype? No. So this, is, this can be a problem. And it's actually related to one violation that I found. But let's see if you also uh, found the same one. So did you find some specific violation on this prototype? Yes. For the third task, then, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I think, yeah, that's for sure a violation. I think that here we have probably two different problems. Um, the first one is that uh, the app is probably difficult to, to understand. At least it's difficult to understand the process through which we can get some discounts and use them with, with other people, okay? And uh, one problem related to this is that there is this confusing terminology. Uh, we have discounts, we have deals, and so on. Uh, so there is a non-consistent uh, terminology that doesn't help us to understand how the system works. Um, and also, it's difficult to understand, there is this uh, point-based system, so you need some point to uh, to get some discount, but at the same time if you use a discount with another people you get some point. So it's a process that is difficult to understand, so in my opinion this also highlights um, a violation related to heuristic number 10. So probably here uh, we need some tutorial, some explanation on how this, this system works, right? So there can be a problem about terminology, which is confused and inconsistent, but we can also have a missing functionality that is linked to help and documentation, so heuristic number 10. Any other? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, users uh, in some part of this prototype uh, have no control on the process. Uh, so for example, you cannot easily go back to a previous uh, screen um, because there are no back buttons here. You can probably use the, the back button of the phone but it would be better to have some explicit way to go back, even in a mobile application. And that's for sure a violation of heuristic, I think, number three, that is related to user control and freedom. Other examples? Yes? Okay, the dollar icon is... Where is the dollar icon here? Uh, ah, in the third, sorry. Yes. Uh, there can be a problem related to the meaning of the icons. That is a little bit uh, unclear. Um, so if I click on this dollar icon, I'm redirected to this screen in which I can see the list of deals uh, and in a way there is this mismatch between the dollar, uh, so the meaning of the dollar in the real world and what I can achieve on the platform, that is a list of, of deals, so there can be confusion. Hmm? So this can be a violation of heuristic number two, I agree with you. So we can either try to find a more appropriate icon or you can maybe add a label to that icon to clarify exactly what is the meaning of, of that icon. Still on the, yeah, it's more related to heuristic number four, I think, consistency. Here, for example, we have this label, find friend, and here we have find new friend, okay? It's probably a small problem, a low priority or a cosmetic problem, but we are not using the same, the same labels for two buttons that probably have the same 
the same functionality, right? So we are using two different icons, two different labels, sorry. Other examples? So we will evaluate you in your, your task will be to find this kind of violations, right? And you will have to properly assign these violations to a proper heuristic. So at least one example, one other example. Yes. Okay, so yeah, here it's also a problem related to the icon, probably. So the meaning of the icon is not uh, reflecting its, its purpose here, according to your colleague. Uh, yeah, I can agree, uh, but however, this kind of icon is typically used in platforms like, like this. Uh, so it can be a problem, but maybe a cosmetic problem only in this case. There is another consistency problem related to buttons. For example, here we have these uh, two buttons, add and skip, and for these two buttons we have a label. Instead, here we have similar buttons without labels. So we are not using a consistent layout, a consistent terminology. And also, more importantly, here we have the add button that is on the left, and here we have the add button that is on the right. And this can be a problem for the user. I know that these probably are two different parts of the system for two different kind of users, but again, it's the same application, so we should be consistent. If the add is on the left, always put it on the left, right? Otherwise, it can create confusions for the user. Yeah, exactly. So maybe it would be better to use different icons or maybe adding a different label for, for the different buttons. Okay? And the last problem is probably related to, mm, I don't know, heuristic number eight, minimalistic design. So this heuristic is uh, more appropriate for final implementations, for final systems in which you have colors, fonts, images, and so on. But it can be also applied to uh, low fidelity prototypes. Um, in this case, I think there is a lot of text in this mobile application, uh, for example here and also probably here. So a lot of text for a mobile app and also this, this table, this sort of table is not so common for a mobile application. I don't know if you agree with me, but I never seen probably before a mobile application showing information in this way, okay? So we should try to follow conventions uh, that can be found in this case on a mobile application. Mm -hmm. So we are not offering a minimalistic experience and a minimalistic design in this case, probably. Okay? If there are no questions, I think we can stop here and have a good evening and see you tomorrow for the feedback section. <laughs>